2013, S UC, SCC, and UCSD, which were filed in 2015. Please note that in columns 6 and 7, the adjusted rate and uh, the remarks portion, we reflected the adjusted rates and recovery period for each pending petition as compared to what we have originally filed in view of the delay in ARC approval. We're supposed, we're in our petition, original petitions, uh, the recovery, we assumed a recovery period of, uh, for 2014, we assumed a recovery period of 2016. And since it's already 2018, we adjusted the rates as well as the recovery period. Mrs. Blanco, can you um, explain to the body, no, for the information of everybody, anong ibig sabihin ng true up? Okay. Um, for UCSD, uh, Mr. Chair, Pisang filed uh, the first UCSD, which is a projected stranded debt of Pisang from 2011 to, to 2026. In 2011, the ERC approved a zero UCSD rate, meaning uh, they, 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 they didn't approve the amount we filed. So, under the ERC guidelines and the IAPIRA, Bisam shall file annually for a true up, uh, adjustment based on the approval, original approval of the ERC, uh, based on the projected SD. So what we're doing now is actual stranded debt, uh, we're calculating the actual stranded debt, like for 2011 to 2012, we've filed a true up adjustment for that and uh, made uh, or deducted it from the zero that was approved by the ERC. Uh, hence, the true up adjustment rate is actually the one we calculated since ERC approved a zero SD rate. So it's just like that for every year of the SD filing, actual SD. So in, in this case, uh, this slide, what you're saying is uh, meron pang pending na 31.3196 na hinihingi ang PISAM this from is ERC, correct? Mr. Chair, yes, uh, that's correct. If we will calculate it, ba or total, just total the rates, the adjusted rates. Adjusted rates, correct. So, in other words nga, uh, if all of this will be approved, uh, 0.3196 will be added in our electricity bill. Correct. That's correct, okay. Mr. Chair. Okay. Next slide, please. Um, with all due respect to ERC, um, we were instructed by during the Committee on Energy hearing on March 20, 2018 to submit a calculation of costs uh, to PISAM of the delay in regulatory approval with data on interest, penalties, and possible new debts due to refinancing. So, as uh, we calculated the cost of regulatory delay for both approved UCSCC and SD petitions, as well as the pending petitions of those um, SCC and SD. For the approved petitions, shown in this slide are the approved petitions, uh, wherein we, we calculate the calculated the cost of regulatory delay based on the following. So, the number of days delayed is reckoned from the ideal date of provisional authority issuance. Uh, in the fifth column, you will see that. And uh, then, the uh, ERC approval, uh, upon receipt of the ERC approval, we uh, deducted the number of days uh, bit from the ideal date of uh, PA issuance to the date of receipt of the PISAM uh, by PISAM of the ERC approval. And shown in the second to the last slide is the number of days delayed. So, for summary, uh, we can say that uh, the delay ranges from 528 days or, up, or 17 months up to 1,866 days or 62 months or 5 years. So based on the total approved SEC and SD amount of 99.47 uh, shown in the lower uh, box, lower mat uh, matrix, the number of days delayed 
and using an, uh, an interest rate, rate based on the uh, based on PISOM's borrowing cost for each year, the total cost of regulatory de delay to PISOM is actually 14.56 billion. Uh, if the 14.56 billion pesos amount is translated to a peso per kilowatt hour, this will be uh, 8 centavos for a recovery period of 7.5 years or the remaining life of PISOM. This is based on a levelized calculation of the uh, absolute amount or the 14.56 billion. Yeah. Let me uh, laymanize this, no? uh, Mrs. Belen. So, ito mga application, approved to, pero delay. Yes, Correct? sir. Delayed siya. Mm -hmm. And because of that delay, <coughs> because of that delay, the cost of that delay is 14 billion pesos. That's correct. Correct. And if you divide that on a per kilowatt hour, lalabas is 0 0.0826 per kilowatt hour. Correct? That's correct, Your But Honor. yung, two, yung 0 0.0826, hindi naman yan i-collect sa consumers. No. For purposes of um, just uh, in, uh, converting the amount to peso per kilowatt hour. So, sino magbabayad ng 14 billion? Um, at the end of the day, Mr. Chair, um, we will have to start borrowing, and then if there is any shortfall or deficit, then we will have to ask the national government to help us out. That means it's through the General Appropriations Act, because... Uh, we will have to keep refinancing until the end of the life of PISAM, because we have a limited life. So at the, at the end of the life of PISAM, everything is turned over to the national government. We don't know exactly yeah. yet where it will be turned but over, but if we leave debts, that those debts will also be turned over. Correct, but uh, the refinancing eventually will be paid by the taxpayers eh, through yeah, the okay. General okay. Appropriations Act. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. So yes. we might not see it in our electricity bill, but definitely you it will have. go, uh, the payment of this delay will be taken out from the taxes that we pay as Filipinos. Uh, Mr. Chair, as uh, a further clarification, um, for the stranded debt, this is based on um, piling on the principal debt service plus interest. Uh, since our applications were uh, delayed, approvals were delayed, we have to go, PISAM has to go to refinancing. So because of the refinancing, we incur interest. So this is more or less equivalent to the cost of delay on the approval. So uh, following the ERC guidelines on the filing of the <coughs> UC, the ERC allows us to recover the financing cost. So effectively, this is being add on on the succeeding applications for the financing cost. So there's two ways to pay that refinancing. Number one, uh, kung ipapatong yan ulit sa electricity bill, kung inalaw kayo to recover it, ipapatong ulit yan sa electricity bill. Correct? Yes. So in other words, tataas yung electricity bill natin. But if the, if um, all of this debts and cost will not be paid by the end of the life of PSAM, it's one de la Cruz who will pay, pay the debts and the cost, including the refinancing. Okay. So go ahead, ma'am. For the next slide, uh, we're showing the cost of regulatory delay uh, based on the pending UCSCC and SD petitions. Previously, we've showed uh, the cost of regulatory delay for the approved petitions of PISOM. Now, this is for the pending uh, petitions on UCSCC and SD. The same calculation was done uh, for this uh, pending petitions. Uh, to date using the amount applied and PISOM's actual borrowing cost. So this, the reckoning date is the ideal date of provisional authority issuance uh, up, to the, uh, up to the date of filing. I, no, no, sorry. The, the reckoning is the ideal date of PA issuance. And um, 
this we calculated this until June 15, 2018, uh, just uh, for to to illustrate that uh, from the date of PA issuance until two date or June June 2015, June 15, 2018, there are no approvals yet from the ERC. So we arrived at a total cost of regulatory de de delay of 6.33 billion pesos, or if translated to a rate, peso per kilowatt hour. This is 0 0.0359 peso per kilowatt hour. So, Belen, I'll just synthesize what you said, no? And laymanize it. Kanina, approve. Yes, sir. Uh, pero delay. Yes, sir. Ito is pending pa rin. Pero delayed na. So the cost of that pending pero delayed na is 6 billion pesos. Yes, sir. No? That's correct, Your Honor. Right. And um, again, no, two modes uh, of uh, paying for this delay is number one, is w it will be included in our electricity bill as later on when you apply to ERC, or number two, at the end of life of uh, PSAM, it will be paid by the taxpayers. Assuming it, no, it will be. Uh, uh, assuming it will not be paid by the end of the life of PSAM, correct? Po? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, just to supplement what is stated in that slide, um, what we computed for that slide is only up to June 2018. But if you want the formula, it's 35 million pesos per month for every additional delay. 35 million pesos per month for every month of delay for every month of delay yes your honor okay thank you in the next slide we're showing you that um, we've also calculated the cost of staggered recovery uh, for the SEC and SD approved amounts. So these are the approved, uh, the ERC approved UC SEC and SD recovery. However, for um, SEC, the first uh, petition approved by the ERC uh, was for a four year recovery period. So that was in um, 2013 to 2017. And uh, for the succeeding uh, SEC, that uh, since this are filed, uh, this cover only one year uh, period, the recovery period is one year also, the proposed recovery period. For the SD, however, per ERC guidelines and the EPIRA, this will have to be recovered, um, not not uh, shorter than 15 years or not longer than 25 years per EPIRA and the ERC guidelines. So what since the 15 years is no longer applicable to us since we have only remaining life of eight years, we filed it up to the end of our life for recovery of that uh, number of years. Okay, so for the staggered cost of staggered recovery, we calculated um, based on a initial remittance to PISAM of the SCC and SD proceeds until full recovery of these amounts. So the, the, the cost is uh, 13.89 billion, equivalent to a levelized rate of 8 centavos or 0 0.0788 peso per kilowatt hour for 7.5 years recovery. Mr. Uh, uh, Ms. Blanco, itong staggered is uh, ideally you'll be given, you filed uh, to ERC for a specific time period. That's correct, correct Your Honor. And uh, normally, ano po yung time period na yun? One year? Two years? If the, if for the SD, it's uh, the remaining life of PISAM. Okay. And then, na-approve is staggered recovery. Correct? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, consistent with the remaining life of PISAM also. So, can you, again, no? can you explain in uh, very simple terms <coughs> kung uh, ano itong staggered recovery? This is um, the rate approved by the ERC, like the UCSD of uh, 2 centavos per kilowatt hour, uh, covering um, 2011 to 20, uh, 40, 2014 or 2013 SD. This will be recovered uh, for starting 
2018 until 20, June 2026. So the two centavos will be um, recovered by PISA, uh, the, the proceeds from the two centavos in possession of the PUC will be recovered by PISA from uh, 28, January 2018 to 2026 June. Monthly, there will be remittances uh, by the collecting entities uh, as well as transco to PISAM and uh, the proceeds, the, the collections will be utilized by PISAM for uh, the liquidation of the stranded debts. Uh, 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 on an average, we're collecting actually one, one billion a year, a year or a month, a month, one billion a month understand to staggered is ito yung meron kayong final for a specific time frame pero mas mahaba yung binigay sa inyo instead for of that specific time frame is that yes right? Sige, Mr. Chair, just to clarify for UCSCC the formula is really for the remaining life of PISAM but this particular slide basically just demonstrates um, we are not going to get the proceeds of the approval of this um, UCSCC one time we have to spread it over a period of time but since NPC has liabilities that are maturing we cannot pay it off using entirely the UCSCC proceeds. So we need to borrow from the bank and the cost to us, the interest cost to us of borrowing from the bank while waiting for the completion of the collection of the UCSCC, that is the cost here indicated, Mr. Chair. But what is your application until the end of the life of PISAM? It's always um, up to the end of the life of PISAM for UCSCC. We are just at USD. Um, we are actually just following the formula of ERC. There is a de there is a very clear formulation for us to to apply our petition. So we just follow the formula of ERC. Follow the formula of ERC, and that is your application. Bakit nakasama dito yung itong slide na ito. Diba, you follow, there's, ERC prescribed a formula, no? Yes. And you applied using that formula. So you basically complied with what ERC yes. uh, requested. So bakit ho kasali itong staggered uh, recovery in this computation? Uh, Mr. Chair, because even if we follow their formula, of course, the formula will not take into consideration the potential delays in approving the petition. Merong time gap between the time that we file the petition and we compute it based on the remaining life of PISAM um, versus the actual time remaining when we get the approval of ERC. So, ito, hindi pa ho kasali to dun sa delay. Wala pa. Hindi, hindi pa, pa ito kasali sa delay niya. Okay. But this is also what you're saying here. This is also attributable to delays. Itong 13 billion na yon. Yes. This is also attri attributable to delays. Is that... Uh, Mr. Chair, yes. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, this slide, uh, the next slide, just shows the summary of the three slides we, present, we previously presented. So the cost of delay and staggered recovery um, totals to 34.78 billion pesos, or if translated to a peso per kilowatt hour, uh, this will be equivalent to 19.1973 peso per kilowatt hour. So. Uh, the, the breakdown is shown in the slide uh, for the approved uh, UCSC CSD for the pending and for the cost of staggered recovery of approved uh, petitions. Okay, Ms. Blanco, then to summarize all of this, uh, to date, um, cost of delay, if you include everything, no, st stranded cost, stranded debt, will amount to 34 billion pesos. Correct? That's correct, Your And uh, that's an equivalent. If you break it down on a per kilowatt hour, that's an equivalent of 0 0.1973 uh, per kilowatt hour. That's correct, correct Mr. Chair. And um, the uh, the 
method to pay the delays is tataasan nyo ulit yung recovery ninyo o magpapatong kayo ulit ng 0.1973 sa electricity bill to cover for the delay. Correct? Uh, uh, on principle, correct. In principle. But when we do the actual application, it is the actual borrowing cost that will be applied. Oh, correct. But in principle, you will now have to add 0.1973 to the electricity bills of the Filipino consumer, correct? Because of the delay. Yes. Or else, pag hindi mabayaran itong stranded debt, stranded cost, uh, Juan de la Cruz, the taxpayer, will now have to add 34 billion pesos to pay for that delay at the end of the life of PSAM. Okay. That's very clear. I guess the... Ito siguro, ito dapat masagot. Bakit na delay? No. And um, I think our friends from ERC should be the one answering this question. Bakit na delay? Sir, good morning, Your Honor. Uh, sir, the, of course, absent. Uh, plus, the, there should be, there we do also have to follow due process prior to any approval from the ERC. In fact, for the ones that are pending before us, the cases are still undergoing hearings. Uh, there are still hearings undergoing and uh, we also have, of course, then after that, we have to verify the figures that were submitted by the ERC, by the, by PISAM, to be verified by the ERC. And then, Your Honor, we also consider the rate impact, of course, to the consume, to the end consumers prior to the ERC approval, Your Honors. Yeah, pero, hindi ba... I don't know if you're conscious or not conscious, but uh, you are now adding 34 billion pesos to the pockets of the taxpayers because of the delay. Uh, we're not even telling you not to do your due process. Kasama uh, yan sa proseso ninyo. Pero dapat binibilisan ninyo yung proseso ninyo because now you're adding... Uh, 34 billion pesos to the pockets of our taxpayers and in addition to that uh, dadagdagan pa ng 19 centavos to our electricity bills because of the delay of ERC and uh, gusto ko lang malaman dahil since 2014 or 2015 uh, meron ng mga delay until now, bakit na di-delay? Dahil kung sinasabi mo, engineer, na you have to look at the rate impact, eh ganun rin eh, magbabayad rin kami ng additional 19 centavos because of the delay. But what you're saying is, dinidelay nyo para hindi tumaas yung presyo ng kuryente. Eh ganun rin mangyari, tataas ang presyo ng kuryente dahil sa delay. In fact, ang... Ang uh, problema pa dito, by the end of PISAM, we might be paying in addition 34 billion pesos. So, ano ba talaga nangyari sa ERC? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. As, as I pointed out earlier, sir. In fact, for those that are pending before the ERC, yung pong uh, cases covering the stranded uh, that out of the three cases that are uh, pending before us, it is only there is only one case that the 2014 case which covers uh, 1.3 billion, which is already uh, submitted for resolution of the ERC. The two cases which uh, covers 27 billion and 34 billion, those cases, your honors, are still undergoing uh, uh, due process, your honors, and in so far as the Standard contract costs, Your Honours, the two cases pending before the Commission is, again, Your Honour, uh, still undergoing hearings and due process, Your Honour. So, in fact, there is, uh, if uh, the ERC will uh, be able to decide on it, it is only one case 
uh, that is uh, covering an amount of 1.3 billion out of the out of the total pending uh, before the ERC that is about uh, 96 billion or one or so out of the 96 billion uh, pending before the ERC it's only in the amount of 1.3 billion that in fact the ERC can can decide on because that's that's the only one that is submitted for resolution your honors well actually uh, engineer it's only because of this uh, resolution file that we found out all of this um, additional costs uh, additional costs uh, that will be charged to our consumers and to our taxpayers this is an additional burden to them because of regulatory delays caused by ERC. And um, alam niyo, um, ERC is now putting nasa spotlight kayo ngayon dahil ang dami yung mga controversies. But in addition to those controversies, papatungan niyo pa si Juan de la Cruz ng 34 billion pesos because of your delay. Um, for me, this is really unacceptable. Um, ano, ang, ano ang solution na nakikita ninyo? Dahil hindi naman pwedeng ganito lang at uh, aantayin namin kayo bago kayo magtrabaho. Anong solution ang gagawin ninyo? Anong, anong improvements ang gagawin ninyo? Because, again, no, ERC is really under under scrutiny in hot water right now. You have to improve. An anong gagawin ninyo para may mas solusyonan tong delays. Sir, in so far as uh, the uh, due process uh, being conducted, Your Honor, uh, we are trying to fast track po yung mga hearings that uh, are required to to render the decisions on this. That's uh, Your Honor, but we could only commit Your Honor. Engineer, we're not the man telling you to uh, disregard your due process. In fact, due process is good because it takes into account uh, the voices of uh, the various stakeholders. However, there should be some limitation to that due process. It cannot be open-ended due process. And we can see, you know, it's very clear you know, from the computation of PSAM that we are now burdened with an additional of 34 billion pesos or an additional of 0.19 centavos on our electricity bill. And this is because of delay, no? Be because of the delay of the regulator. Um, ang hinahanap ko ngayon, anong solusyon na ibibigay nyo sa amin? Mr. Chair, if I may, just yes, to... Yes, Chairman. Uh, make it more factually accurate. Um, it's not accurate to say that there's only one um, case of PISAM that's pending in the ERC. Um, earlier, our friend from ERC mentioned that there is one, yung 1.3B na U UCSD for 2014 that's already submitted for decision. We've already completed the hearings. In other words, there's no due process needed because we've completed it already. It's pending and just awaiting decision. But there is also another one, um, which is actually a substantial amount. It involves 21 billion. It is for the um, year 2011-2012 SD for 21B um, with a recovery period of nine years. We've already completed all the hearings and all the due process um, requirements, but we have not gotten yet the decision of the ERC on that. Well, again, I, 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 um, I don't think you are um, authorized to give us some form of credible and accurate answer. No, I think it's really uh, the commissioners who can uh, answer my questions. Uh, kung paano ma improve yung proseso ninyo. Uh, can you bring it up to your commissioners that uh, they are now charging the taxpayers an additional of 34 billion pesos or an additional of 19 centavos on our electricity bills? And this is because of delays. 
purely delays. No? Uh, hindi umakto ng tama, sa tamang oras. Uh, open-ended yung due process ninyo. Um, bring this up to the commissioners. No? Dahil wala namang commissioners who dito. And submit to us your improved process flow including due process uh, for the approval of this uh, application and also the applications of the other entities. Dahil, um, in fact, uh, kung hindi ho natin pinag-usapan itong resolution na ito, hindi ho natin malalaman na ang laki na pala binabayaran ho natin as taxpayers. I doubt it kung meron kayong ganitong computation or else I don't, I, or else, kung alam niyo na ito, hindi pa kayo umakto, then hindi na ho dapat kayo nasa pwesto. Uh, Mr. Chair, currently the ERC is undergoing a process re uh, a review of all its processes from all the services, which includes as well the due process, uh, the tie-up between the regulatory operation service as well as the legal service. Uh, but please note that we cannot really uh, immediately, uh, immediately uh, create effects with respect to the uh, to the pending cases. We're trying our best to fast track all the due process, but we're still ha trying our best to hire more people uh, to expand our uh, manpower in order to address all those pending cases. Thank you. I don't want to dwell so much in this. Uh, no, no. But I'm just telling you that there's a problem in your due process. Uh, procedures. Uh, clearly, it's a 34 billion peso problem you know, uh, to be shouldered by the Filipino people. And um, what I want you to do is to bring this up to your commission and give us a solution. You know, because this is unacceptable. Again, if Senator Recto didn't file this bill, wala mo mga kalaman na ganito pala kalaki na yung cause of delay. We recognize our uh, shortcomings, Your Honor, and we will sub, uh, we will bring this up to the commission. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Attorney. Um, Mrs. Blanco, let's continue the presentation. Um, in the next slide, you will see uh, PISOM's outstanding financial obligations as of uh, 31 December 2017. Uh, and this uh, financial obligations, which were formal, formerly NPC's financial obligations, have been assumed and transferred to PISAM uh, as of 20, 2009. So, um, the, this bar chart uh, shows that uh, there has been substantial reduction in the financial obligations from a peak of 1.2 trillion in 2003 down to 466 billion as of the end of 2017. Uh, the breakdown of the financial obligations are uh, debts of 263 billion as of 2017 and IPP list obligations of um, 202.9 billion, 202 billion pesos as of the se uh, same date. So, NPC's financial obligations assumed by PISAM has been reduced to 62%, equivalent to uh, 774 billion from 2003 level to December 2017 uh, level. The reduction in financial obligations um, excludes interest payments amounting to 356 billion. Uh, as shown in the smaller box, uh, are the financial obligations serviced by PISAM from 2001 to, 20, to uh, 2017. So for principal debts, 567.7 billion has been paid and for interest uh, and other charges on these principal debts, 356 billion has been um, uh, settled. For the IPP lease obligations, 555.7 billion has been paid to the IPP uh, contractors of uh, NPCP sum. So the total uh, debts or financial obligation service amount to 1.47 trillion pesos as of 2017. Please. Uh, so let me just repeat it. No? So to date, ang utang pa natin is 466 billion pesos. That's correct, Your Honor. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, uh, attorney, go ahead. Can you please use the microphone? Uh, inc including the note, note of the of the page of an interest of three hundred fifty-six billion. That will bring the total financial obligation to eight hundred thirty-one billion. Meaning, we are almost in year 2000 when PISAM took over the obligation of NPC. So that, that graph, I think, is a little bit misleading as far as consumers are concerned. Wala tayong in-improve, yet in our Meralco bill, Mr. Chairman, as of date, I brought my present bill. We are paying 22.73 centavos per kilowatt hour for the SD and SCC. So, in fact, uh, I want to ask the question already. Hanggang kailang ba? <laughs> Hanggang kailang ba kayo maniningil sa mga utang sa consumers? Remember, uh, I have said this in other forum. Eh. Why, Mr. Chairman, why do NPC and PISAN now keep on passing on to us debts that were incurred, maybe due to mismanagement, inefficiencies, and other issues? Kasi tinignan ko rin yung cash flow niyo the next page eh. You'll, you'll never pay your debt. You know. Maybe instead of going, going every year to ERC for your filings, maybe you should already consider another policy directions on how to keep your financial situation healthy. Why don't you look back in the past? When I say in the past, during the circa, uh, when we had power shortages. Mr. Chairman, uh, kasi alam mo naman, galing ako sa energy, no? Ang laki rin ng utang ng, ng NPC at that time. Uh, yung ginawa nun, katulad ng proposal mo eh, may pondo nun under the oil subsidy, OPSF ang tawag doon eh. Dahil dapat linisin ang utang, Ipag, yung PNOC nga umiyak nun kasi lahat ng projects namin biglang na walang pera, ibinigay sa kanila, clean slate. But what happened? In now, 2018, you're back to where you were before. I mean, ito puro numbers eh. Hindi ito maintindihan consumers. I'm trying just to summarize what we feel. You know. What we feel is that you're handling your problem purely as a uh, Mathematics professor, you know, compute nyo lang. Ito, ito yung kailangan nyo. Dapat nga, wala na kayo sweldo ngayon kasi utang kayo eh. Negative kayo. Walang katapusan si Chairman. When do you see the light? Plus, of course, nandiyan pa isang for the next 20 years, meron pa. Ito, fixed cost ito eh. Wala ito sa generation yung Ikaw ba yung nagtipid ng kuryente? Wala to. Attorney will be discussing some solutions later on. No? I think that's the uh, the meat of this uh, resolution. But first, let's uh, clarify first yung uh, kanina na-mention ni Attorney Dimagi ba no? on the computation. Um, anyone from PISAM? Um, Mr. Chair, just to clarify, no, 
Um, from since the time of since the start of the life of PISAM, we have already serviced around 1.48 trillion financial obligations. That's uh, for the past 17 years, and the breakdown of that is the principal amount of 567 uh, billion. And then we have IPP lease obligations of around 555 billion. And then, of course, the interest cost to us, which is 356 um, billion. So it is not really fair to PISAM to say that we have not really done anything. Because um, when the assets were turned over to us, we, the liabilities were likewise turned over to us, but the assets were not liquid assets. They were, they were not cash that we can easily turn around and pay to the banks. We had to go through a process of privatizing all of these things. In fact, we were given a total of 25 years to do that. But there is a cost to borrowing. We have to raise the money to pay as the obligations were maturing. So as a result, there were also... Um, obligations resulting from the interest payments. And um, just to answer his question on until when are we going to pass this on, um, EPIRA is very clear. We're only implementing what the law says, which is to complete it up to the life of PISAM. And which is, we still have eight years to go, Mr. Chairman. 2026. Um, and the, the last question of the gentleman here was, what are we doing about it? Well, that's precisely why we are he here. Um, we are hoping that there is a solution instead of just keeping on, instead of just borrowing from the banks, maybe um, this bill is the fastest and most practical way to solve this problem so that the consumers will not have to bear the brunt of paying the obligations of NPC. Uh, attorney? Let me just repeat it, no? Uh, so to date, ang utang natin is 466 billion. No? Principal. Principal amount. Yes. Okay. Uh, in kanina, can, can someone uh, clarify the uh, uh, question of Attorney Di Magiba? Um, Mr. Chair, the outstanding obligation of PISAM as of December 2017 is 466 billion. This amount represents only the principal. Uh, since the debt is subject to payment of interest, until the end of PISAM, we will be paying additional 82 billion covering the interest payment. We would like also to clarify that the, the chart here represents the principal obligation. So what we are saying on the note that there is a 356 billion paid on the interest. This is the actual interest paid for the past uh, uh, 16 years. So uh, it is not correct to add the 356 billion to the, our outstanding balance in December 2017. So ito po yung total interest that we paid in the past years up to 2017. And looking on the chart, which is the principal, we actually reduce the principal obligation by 62%. Now, uh, what is our obligation as of June 2018? The 466 billion principal went down again to 400. Ah, uh, by June 2018, our outstanding principal uh, from 466 billion is now 490 billion because of the peso depreciation. By end of 2017, the exchange rate is only 49.9 pesos to a dollar. Now we are now almost 54 pesos to a dollar. So for every one peso depreciation, since our obligations is more than 70% foreign denominated, we are increasing our obligations by 8 billion for every peso depreciation. So uh, even we paid our obligation for the past six months, the decrease was lower than the increase because of the fluctuation. So the 466 billion is now for 490 billion pesos.
uh, just for para lang to be clear no uh, on the uh, time series we're using the 2017 for now no for now we are using the 2017 uh, converted to peso using the 49.9 to a dollar. So, to, uh, for now, uh, uh, fiscal year of 2017, we have 466 billion in debts and cost. Correct? Na babayar, dapat bayaran natin. No? Correct. That's correct, Mr. Okay. Chair. Sige. Um, let's go to, let's go ahead. Uh, for the information of the body also, I uh, would like to inform that uh, the Commission on Audit has issued its audit report dated August 28, 2009 on PISAL's financial reports for the year ended 2008 stating that the asset and debt accounts transfer, transferred from NPC to PISAL have been audited. And we've submitted to the Committee on Energy a copy of this annual report as well as the detailed list of the uh, outstanding debts and um, IPP lease obligations uh, as of 2017. In the next slide, we're showing you our cash flow projections from 2019 onwards. Uh, this reveals a projected total cash shortfall or deficit uh, in the third row, uh, you will see the total cash shortfall or deficit of 215 billion pesos. Um, year on year, PISAM will incur deficits until 2024 in view of uh, higher disbursements or expenses more than the receipts due to the following assumptions. So as mentioned by um, our VP Alsona, the financial obligations were affected by the depreciation of the peso to the U.S. dollar since 72% um, of our obligations are, foreign are in foreign currency. Also, there will be bullet payments uh, for maturing bonds in 2019 and 2024. Also, the priva privatization proceeds included are only those relative to privatized power plants and IPP contracts as of to date. So the remaining power assets, um, the private proceeds have not been projected for the remaining power assets. Another reason for the deficit is that the operations of remaining power assets, except for the Agus Pulangi Hydros, incur net losses. And lastly, uh, we have not factored in in these uh, projections the pending petitions uh, that have not yet been approved by the ERC. Okay. So for 2019, uh, PISAM will incur a deficit of 74 billion pesos, which a big part of which is due to the bullet payment uh, for a maturing bond amounting to 53 billion. Uh, and uh, we're planning to refinance this through uh, new borrowings uh, because uh, as, sh as shown in the um, matrix, we, have, uh, al we are already incurring deficit for uh, 2019. We will be incurring deficit for 2019. So with these new borrowings, uh, which will have additional cost, PISAM's cash flow will only be 3.77, the, the last line, uh, lower line, 3.77 in 2019, but in totality, it will increase to uh, 244 billion by the end of 2031 due to the repayment of the borrowings by 2026. If it will be recalled, uh, the Committee on Energy instructed PISAM last March to prepare preliminary cash flows on the proposed utilization of the Malampaya Fund or application of the fund for the liquidation of the projected stranded contract costs and stranded debts uh, using the balances um, uh, given to us by the committee. So uh, this will be uh, our ba our, um, the numbers that we will be using for the simulation of the cash flows uh, on the utilization of the Malampaya Fund. So Ms. Blanco, let me uh, again uh, synthesize and make this as simple as possible. Um, by 2026, the end of the life of PISAM, magkakaroon ba tayo ng deficit na 271 billion? Correct? That's correct, Your Honor. Ibig sabihin, utang natin yan. Babayaran pa natin yung 271 billion. That's, that's correct. correct, Your Honor. So, tapos na ang PISAM, no? tapos na ang mandato ng PISAM, but we still have to pay 271 billion pesos. Okay? Ngayon, who will pay the 271 billion pesos? 
since wala na ho ang PSAM? Uh, uh, pursuant to the appeal, Mr. Chair, uh, the all the assets and liabilities remaining after the life of PSAM will revert back uh, and be assumed by the national government. Okay. Assuming the assets, assuming all things equal, no? um, who will pay that 271 billion? I think, assuming all things equal, no, from now on till 2026, may deficit tayo ng 271 eh. Assuming that um, we will file universal charge for these deficits, uh, it will be the electricity end users that will uh, pay for this uh, deficit. But in this case, hindi nyo sinama yung mga approvals, correct? That's the part. Uh, we didn't uh, include the pending. The pending approvals, no? So, in other words nga, from now on to 2026, status quo, you know, all things equal, meron tayong magkakaroon, magkakaroon tayo ng 271 billion pa na utang, no? Uh, if I might add, um, this is status quo uh, scenario. Th this, this is status quo scenario, eh? Status quo scenario, meaning... Uh, we have not considered the pending tariff application. In other words, this is the worst case scenario. Worst case scenario. Right. Oh. And there is no privatization for the remaining assets. Which is a worst case scenario also. Yes, no. yes. Um, so we're now, uh, no. I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to figure out, in the worst case scenario, who will now assume the 271 billion pesos? Uh, following again the IPRA, the, this will be assumed by the government because any assets or liabilities that will be uh, remaining by the end of the PISAM life, it will be transferred to the national government. So it will form part of our national debt? Yes, Mr. Chair. Which is, uh, will be charged to the Taxpayers. Taxpayers. So in effect, the 271 billion pesos left over by the end of the life of PISAM will be now shouldered by the taxpayers. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, but remember we still have assets that will be transferred also to the government. Mm. So it will not be exactly the 270 billion. It will be lower than that. Yeah, what, assuming uh, no, worst case scenario, to, eh. no? well, I mean... Status quo from now on till uh, 2026. No, um, this is a worst case scenario, and we, we want to plan for the worst case scenario. Ba yun ang gusto natin. In best case is really um, gravy na yun. But in worst case, we have to plan, no? Because 2026 is actually um, just around the corner. No, so we want to plan for that. And um, In fact, uh, by 2031, all things equal, uh, yung utang na yan magiging tuloy-tuloy eh. Correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, I mean, that will just go on actually, for a very long time. We, we uh, presented up to 2031 because we still have one uh, BOT contract that will expire by that time. Right, yes. Okay, may cash, may cash in pa kayo, eh, no? That's right, that's All right. correct. So, yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Let's go ahead. So, as uh, explained, um, the deficit or annual shortfall, uh, we were, we're going to use the deficits or annual shortfall uh, projected uh, in that slide, the, the previous slide, as our um, equivalent to the uh, standard contract cost and standard debt of PISAM uh, for the reason that the, the deficit or annual shortfall already considered the, pri the privatisi privatization proceeds as of 2017, the UC approved uh, recoveries as of 2017, as well as the remaining operations of our plans, uh, which is the same also uh, for the calculation of the SEC and SD. So, in the next slide, uh, we've simulated uh, a no malampaya fund um, run that uh, there will be no malampaya fund that will be released to PISAM. So in the second uh, column uh, the, are the annual shortfalls of PISAM, uh, that's in PHP billions, and uh, the third column is the cumulative deficit. 
for the deficit that uh, we'll be incurring ye yearly, we will have to borrow if there will be no funds coming from Priva, from UC, or from Malampaya. So there will be additional borrowing cost. Uh, and to, just to illustrate, there will be uh, UC impact for this shortfalls as well as the additional borrowings and uh, we've calculated this uh, for like for 2020 there will be a total UC impact of 0 0.0866 peso per kilowatt hour for 2021 it's 0 0.0814 per kilowatt hour for 2022 it's 0 0.0881 per, uh, peso per kilowatt hour for 2023, it's 0.0527 peso per kilowatt hour. And for 2024, it's 0.2504 peso per kilowatt hour. Uh, this means that um, uh, these are based on the annual shortfall amounts as well as the additional borrowing cost. Uh, the UC uh, st stranded, that stranded co contract cost amount translated to peso per kilowatt hour in 2020 is assumed to be filed in the next year and uh, assumed to be uh, approved by ERC in the second year. So if we will plot the, the recovery of PSAM, it will not be on a, uh, the same year. For 2020 UC impact, the recovery will be in 2022 and uh, so on. So tw for 2021 UC impact, the recovery will be in 2023 uh, and so on. The total UC impact that we have calculated is actually 0 0.5593 peso per kilowatt hour if there will be no Malampaya funding. Ms. Blanco, uh, again, no, I'll, I'll eliminate this. Um, by 2026, at the end of the life of PSAM, um, there will be a remaining 271 billion pesos. Uh, yun yung nasa line, no? And that 271 billion pesos will now be shouldered by the taxpayers. Correct? Correct. Right. On the worst case scenario, Mr. Chair. At the worst case scenario. At the same time, because of the shortfall uh, incurred uh, during uh, different years, um, PISAM will be forced to finance those shortfall. And the cost of that financing is about an additional of 0.5593 pesos per kilowatt hour. So, dagdag to sa electricity bill natin. Correct? So, nagkautang na napasa pa natin sa taxpayer 271 billion pesos at tatasan pa natin yung kuryente by 0.5593 pesos per kilowatt hour. So, ganun yung lumalabas dito sa computation niyo Correct? Alright, go ahead. This is the worst case scenario. Ah. That's correct, Mr. Chair. Um, you will note that uh, for 2024, uh, 25 and 2026, there are no calculated borrowings. Uh, it's because for 2025, there's already a surplus for PISAM. But come 2026... We recognize the presence of uh, Senator Binay. Ma'am, good morning. Good morning. Go ahead, uh, Ms. Blanco. Okay. Um, by 2026, there will be a big uh, shortfall, cash shortfall of 71.82 billion, uh, and this uh, is uh, pertaining to the 2019 uh, proposed financing for our deficit, which will mature uh, in 2026. So, there are no additional borrowing costs for 2025, but uh, because there is a surplus. And there is a deficit in 2026, uh, but since it's already um, the end of our corporate life, we will no longer file for the for any, or we will no longer refinance or file for any UC recovery. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, uh, so yes, uh, attorney. I just want to know the outstanding balance of uh, the borrowings uh, from the banks, and and secondly. Uh, it seems that you don't have to have a uh, 
projections and the outstanding debts, you know, the standard debts, uh, standard uh, costs, as well as you presume that uh, by 2026, the debts uh, with the banks uh, shall have been fully paid. I also noticed that uh, you have a negative uh, cash flows, but it does not uh, presuppose that uh, that negative cash flows uh, would, uh, in effect, uh, give rise to uh, uh, payment of the of the uh, standard uh, debts and cost. I, I have several questions, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. The first one is that there was no uh, presentation as to the uh, outstanding balance of the bank uh, borrowings. And, and secondly is that uh, I would like to show also, I would like to, uh, to be uh, informed also as to the uh, uh, projected uh, balance or outstanding balance of the standard uh, debts and costs by, the, by 2026. Uh, what I saw actually is the negative uh, cash flows, but it did not show the outstanding uh, uh, debts uh, as of uh, 2026. Because uh, if you uh, remember the, pipe, the bar chart, so what they demonstrated lang is the uh, cash flow. Uh, just for the information of everyone, um, the debts are being also paid by asset sales and also sales of from IPP contracts. Kaya if you notice, uh, bumababa yung utang natin because nagbabenta rin sila ng assets and ng uh, IPP contracts. So bumababa siya ng bumababa. No? But uh, of course, uh, it's not enough. No? That's why by 2026, uh, we will still have 271 million billion pesos left over. No. Actually, ako sumasok. Dapat kayo sumagot niyan, Ms. Blanc. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chair, we have here the breakdown of our obligations as of uh, December 2017. On the debt, we have uh, foreign loans outstanding of 67.5 billion pesos. Uh, that's the foreign uh, loan. On the domestic loan, which is due to Land Bank, uh, this is 78.8 billion pesos. Uh, we have bonds. These are the uh, due to Salomon, uh, HSBC. Uh, these are seven bonds totaling 161.3 billion pesos. Uh, there is also a domestic bond, uh, NG Relending Facility of 24.3 billion, total bonds of 185.7 billion pesos, and uh, other loans of 118 million. So on the total debt, it is 264.7 billion pesos. The rest are all IPP obligations, IPP contracts, under BOT. There are no. Um, Yes, Mr. Can may, may break down can be you can flash that later on. All right, uh, let's go to um, the uh, next slide, which is the partial use of Malampaya. Just for the information of everyone, uh, Attorney De Magba, uh, the proposal of center rector is to use Malampaya funds to pay off stranded debt and stranded costs. No? Uh, earlier, what PSAM demonstrated is the worst case scenario. No? Assuming hindi ma-approve ng ERC, uh, at, uh, may natirang uh, stranded debt, hindi nakabenta ng assets, no? may, may matitirang 271 billion by the end of PSAM. The complication of this worst case scenario is the 271 billion will be passed on to the consumers through the GAA. No? It will be now part of national debt. No? I think BTR can answer that later on. But uh, from what I understand, it will now be part of national debt. So, babayaran natin lahat huyan. Ngayon, there are two scenarios being proposed by PSAM. No? And the first case scenario is the partial use of Malampaya Fund. No? 
which uh, Ms. Blanc will now elaborate. Uh, the partial use of the Malampaya Fund amounting to 123 billion, which um, as uh, per guidance of the Committee on Energy, uh, this is uh, the balance as of 27, uh, 2017. So the 123 billion Malampaya Fund will be utilized as follows. Uh, to fund for the annual shortfalls of PISAM, from 2020, from 2020 to 2022, uh, the, the total deficit of PISAM from 2020 to 2022 is 138 billion, and with 123 billion only of Malampaya Fund, there will be a balance or deficit remaining for uh, with PISAM of 11 billion. So for those three years that uh, the Malampaya Fund will be utilized, there will be no um, uh, borrowing cost, additional borrowing cost for PISAM since this will uh, address the shortfalls. But come 2023, uh, when there will be no replenishment from the Malampaya Fund, there will again be a deficit uh, continuing until 2024. And hence, so we will uh, again borrow and uh, incur additional borrowing costs. That's why we've calculated uh, a UC impact for the uh, shortfalls after Malampaya funding as well as the additional borrowing costs uh, as shown in the last column, the total UC impact. Beginning 2022, uh, you see total UC impact of 0 0.0244 peso per kilowatt hour will be um, filed uh, with the ERC. For 2023, uh, 0 0.0350 peso per kilowatt hour total UC impact. And for 2024, it's 0 0.2261 peso per kilowatt hour. Or a total of 0.2855 peso per kilowatt hour for the three years that there will be uh, shortfalls after the Malampaya funding. Okay. So um, let me, again, no, synthesize. Um, the partial use of Malampaya calls for the use of approximately 123 billion from the Malampaya Fund, in which this 123 billion will be used to pay off the shortfall. Not the debt, huh? but the shortfall. No, those are two different things. Eh? The shortfall lang. Um, after utilizing to pay off the shortfall, by 2026, we will still have 143 billion left over. Correct? Uh, this is a uh, huge reduction from the no case or the worst case scenario of 271. Pero magdadagdag pa rin tayo ng 28 0.2855 per kilowatt hour um, in the partial use of Malampaya scenario. Correct? That's correct, Mr. Chair. Pero mas mababa na siya sa 0.5593. Halos kalahate. That's correct, okay. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, may attorney. I seek permission? Uh, Rivera. I understand that the uh, Malampaya fund shall cover the short pole rather than the debts. But we all know that the debts carry various rates of interest. Some debts carry more onerous uh, interest. Why, why not uh, focus on the uh, debts which have uh, high interest and this are and, and also uh, debts which uh, are subject to uh, to uh, uh, for exchange uh, volatility, for example, the the dollar denominated debts, for example, rather than the short term. Because the short purpose supposes that all uh, that the uh, the obligations shall shall be addressed, but however, I would uh, this is my humble suggestion, Mr. Chairman, that you should be discriminate in applying the uh, the uh, Malampaya Fund. Uh, you have to determine which of the debts are more onerous than the rest, so that we will pay off the more onerous debts rather than apply the. Uh, Manapale pain uh, arbitrarily to all uh, to all creditors. Uh, 
in response to from the from Nea. <laughs> yes. Um the what uh, was said is to uh, have uh, this is on the liability management program. Uh, on the part of ISAM, we have done uh, this. this. Uh, in fact, we already had a prepayment of our debt during the years 2009-2010 because this were, these were the years that we have uh, bulk of our collection and the private proceeds were received. So we paid our uh, loans that are having uh, high interest rates. And also on the bonds, the bonds are expensive and commercial bonds. We already conducted the uh, bond buyback. But it is very uh, difficult to implement that. That's why we still have uh, the most of our balances and the debts are bonds. But we have implemented it to, through the help of Land Bank of the Philippines. As I mentioned earlier, the breakdown of our outstanding obligations now is only on the debt, is a uh, bulk is on the land bank loan, and on the bonds, these are only in nine, yung nine accounts na lang. So, yun po na gawa na namin yun. And also, with regard to the uh, currency, uh, currency risk, we have done our financial hedging. Uh, we have the principal only swap with three banks, uh, HSBC, U UBS, and uh, Barclay. So, nakapag ano na po kami ng uh, pinag namin yung dollar loan, 300 million dollar loan into a fixed peso rate of how much that 40? Yung POS. So, yung pong ating 300 million dollars because of the financial hedging, we had, we entered into principal only swap and we pegged the exchange rate to 44 to a dollar. So, nagawa na po namin yun, natira na lang ito. Bernie Demagi ba? Do you have uh, questions? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman Torbina, good morning. Yeah. Uh, you, you, I have two, three questions. First, para klaro, no? Uh, in these two slides, you use the word shortfall. Eh. Okay, define lang para uh, alam ko rin kung ano yung ating POR, no? What do you mean by shortfall? Second, Mr. Chairman, ito po yung importante, no? Ha? Sa 123 billion, two years lang na uh, walang idadagdag sa consumer in terms of peso per kilowatt hour. Tama ba yung basa ko si slide nyo? 2000, the three years, no? Three years, 19, actually. 2021. May computation ba kayo? Anong sukle ng 123 billion in terms of peso per kilowatt hour na hindi madadagdag sa Meralco bill namin? No? Pangatlo, after 2000, Pagdating ng 2022, meron na namang kayong filings. No, ha? The last question is, assuming pumasa itong bill na ito, anong effect nito dun sa mga bago niyong penile for uh, sa ERC? I saw, you, I saw your uh, publication over the weekend or a week ago. Yung ba ay eh, i-archive na nyo, i-dismiss ninyo, or what? Yun po mga tanong ko. Salamat. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, there were three questions raised. The first question is, what is, how do we define the shortfall? Uh, in our cash flow, the shortfall refers to the deficit or the disbursement that we cannot anymore pay out of our projected private proceeds and other proceeds from the operations of the remaining assets. So these are mostly the debt or the IPP contracts that cannot be covered by the projected receipts for each year. So that's the shortfall every year. And on the question on the 123 billion Malampaya fund, uh, right, uh, there will be only three years that there will be 
uh, utilization of the Malampaya Fund, and for those three years, there will be no more UC filing. And after that, come the fourth year, there will be, we will go back again to the filing of the UC as provided in the IPRA. Uh, the impact of this to the consumer, because for three years, we will be saving uh, instead of uh, charging 55 pesos, uh, 55 centavos per kilowatt hour, it will now be 28 centavos per kilowatt hour. The total impact to the consumer actually is uh, 57 centavos per kilowatt hour because the pending applications at ERC uh, under the cash flow scenario, this will not anymore be, this will not anymore considered in the cash flow. Aro, yung three years e equivalent to how much savings in UC? Uh, for the three years, the savings is 57 centavos per kilowatt hour. Yes, po. yes, Mr. Yes. Hindi na po na-consider yung nakapending ngayon na 30 centavos yon. And then you must receive dito sa, sa coming years, uh, yun nga yung bababa na sa 28 centavos, nasip po natin yung 57 centavos per kilowatt hour. Attorney, with all due respect, later on meron silang uh, slide on the savings. No? Um, I told them to break it down para makita ng consumers natin kung ano yung nasisave nila. Right, let's uh, move on. Okay. To continue, uh, another um, simulation was done using 204, next slide please, 204 billion, the entire uh, balance of the Malampaya Fund as of 2017, which is 204 billion pesos. So, if we will apply the entire balance of Malampaya Fund uh, on PISOM's annual shortfalls, uh, this will cover years from 2020 until uh, 2024. And by 2024, there will be um, remaining deficit of 3 billion only. So for that remaining uh, shortfall or deficit, uh, if we will borrow for this, we will, ha we will be filing for uh, a use total UC impact of 0 0.0126 peso per kilowatt hour. And after that, 2025, there's a surplus already, and in 2026, we'll be uh, wrapping up our operations since that's the end of our corporate life. So for the 204 billion utilization of Malampaya Fund, only 0 0.0126 peso per kilowatt hour will be uh, filed or will be the impact in terms of UC. So, um, Ms. Blanco, again, we'll, we'll uh, laymanize this. Uh, um, pag ginamit natin yung buong Malampaya Fund, no? uh, by the end of uh, PSAM's life in 2026, may matitira pang 63 billion pesos. No? Correct? Deficit. Deficit, which will be uh, absorbed by the taxpayers. No? But this is... Uh, far below the 271 billion deficit no in fact a savings of 208 billion no um, at the same time uh, it itong scenario na ito will be charging the consumers an additional of 0 0.0126 per kilowatt hour no still a far cry from the 0.5593 per kilowatt hour on the worst case scenario no correct ito po yung interpretation nitong data um, sige po, let's move on to the next slide. To summarize, uh, the slide shows the summary impact to the consumers of the Malampaya Fund utilization. So, under a no Malampaya Fund scenario, if uh, we will consider the pending UC petitions uh, in peso per kilowatt hour, it's 0 0.3007 peso per kilowatt hour. And for the future UC impact, it's 0 0.55.93. That will uh, be a total of 0 0.86 
peso per kilowatt hour, assuring that there will be no balantay fund for the sum or for the sums deficit. If there will be Malampaya Fund uh, releases to PISAM at the scenario of uh, 123 billion pesos, the pending UC petitions, as mentioned by uh, VP Alsona, will no longer be uh, part of the uh, rate that will be passed on to consumers. Only the future UC impact pertaining to the deficits or shortfalls after the Malampaya Fund utilization will be um, filed. That's the 0.2855 peso per kilowatt hour. So uh, I will continue with the avoided impact to end consumers. Uh, deducting the 86, uh, per, uh, 0.86 peso per kilowatt hour uh, and the 0.2855 peso per kilowatt hour that will be a reduction uh, down to 0.5745 per kilowatt hour. And if we will um, convert this or translate this to uh, savings to electricity and consumers, for a 200, uh, consumer consuming 200 kilowatt hour monthly consumption, uh, the, this will only be 114.90 pesos for the 200 kilowatt hour. And on a per year basis, this will be 1,378.80 centavos pesos. So with the, uh, the utilization, uh, on the other hand, with the utilization of the total Malampaya Fund of 204 billion, again, the pending UC petitions will no longer uh, uh, be present. And the future UC impact only will be there will be charged or filed, that's 0 0.0126 peso per kilowatt hour. So if we uh, deduct the normal Lampaya fund uh, rate of 0.86 peso per kilowatt hour uh, minus the 0 0.0126, there will be avoided impact to end consumers of 0.8474 peso per kilowatt hour and translated uh, as savings to end consumers, uh, this is equivalent per month to 169 pesos and per year 2,033.76 pesos. So, uh, in summary, um, when we use Malampaya Fund, um, when we use the entire Malampaya Fund, the consumers will stand to save 0.8474 per kilowatt hour. No? Uh, and for an ordinary consumer consuming 200 kilowatt hour per month, lumalabas ang savings niya is 169 pesos no? uh, per month or sa, sa isang taon, 2,033 pesos per year. Yun ang savings niya. Uh, if we go with the partial use of malampaya, ang savings ng consumer is 0.5745 per kilowatt hour. Uh, for an average 200 kilowatt hour consumption, that's 114 pesos per month or 1,378 pesos per year. Um, doon sa... If you put this in context, no, if you look at the entire use of Malampaya, 169 pesos per month na savings, that's an equivalent of 5 kilos of rice per family. Yung 200 kilowatt hour monthly consumption, that's a, uh, I would consider a below minimum wage or a almost minimum wage consumption to eh. No? More or less, no? Nasa minimum wage consumption. Uh... Minimum wage earner, yung 200 kilowatt hour monthly consumption. On the average, ganyan yung kanyang profile. So, yung minimum wage earner will now take home about 5 kilos of rice per month with this, uh, with this uh, savings. No? Attorney Dimag, ba? Meron kayong... This is a consumer na ho to. Baka meron kayong any... Uh, Observations? Uh, Mr. Chairman, when we first scheduled the hearing on this, uh, I think immediately uh, 
we supported your bill. Um, at the moment, uh, I'm still digesting the numbers. And uh, these are all assumed numbers. Eh. Hindi naman po to talagang 86 centavos yung impact no 57. Mm -hmm. um, with 200 billion peso malang paya fund, which by law are earmarked also for other government programs. Uh, and uh, at the moment, I, I'm trying to, to determine the cost and benefit of using the fund now to support uh, PISAM. Because uh, as I said earlier, after 18 years of the IPRA law, and uh, how many more years? 2026, uh, six more years, you will be leaving debts to the taxpayers. And yet, we want to use a source of money through extraction of indigenous resources just to cover for your financial obligations. Parang tinitimbang pa kung may rational ba. Ang rational ba is more will the advantages outweigh the disadvantages if we keep the Malampaya Fund for its original purpose by law. Siguro with that maybe I have opened the uh, ASIC of DOE. <laughs> Sila po ang policy ng, ano eh, ng malampaya fund eh. Uh, pero siyempre, pag numbers lang pag-uusapan, okay yun. Tatlong taon tayong makakatipid ng 57 centavos and then 84 centavos. Problema lang yun. Sa chairman, as you know, baka naman yung savings na yan na tatlong taon, kukuni naman yan dun sa isang fixed charges din dito sa bill natin yung annual increases din ng feed-in tariff allowance. Parang, you have to balance. No? Maraming factors eh. Save ka dito, kuni naman dito. Then, talo pa rin consumers. So, medyo will study it thoroughly. Thank you, attorney. And to, uh, I think there we have a few more slides. Huh? Okay. Uh, May we continue? Okay. Last slide. Last slide. Rationale. Yan. Okay. The last slide uh, shows the rationale for the utilization of the Malampaya Fund. Uh, we've uh, come up with five justifications or uh, good, very good reasons why um, the Malampaya Fund should be uh, utilized for the stranded contract costs and stranded debts uh, transferred from NPC to PISAL. So first is that if uh, the, the Malampaya Fund funding for the SEC and SD pending and future petitions will not be passed on to electricity and consumers. As uh, shown in the previous slides, that will be a total of um, uh, a maximum of 86 uh, 0.86 peso per kilowatt hour, uh, and the breakdown is shown there. So for the pending petitions, it's 0 0.3007 peso per kilowatt hour. For the future uh, UCS, CCNS, the impact, it's 0 0.46.81. And for the future additional borrowing cost, it's 0 0.0911, or a total of 0 0.86 um, peso per kilowatt hour. The second um, reason is that uh, th there will be available funds that will ensure operational of efficiency uh, for our operations, for PISAM's operations. So uh, a working capital of $4 billion per month is um, uh, the gauge for us that, that, that will be available to us if uh, we will be freed up with the payment of the stranded debts and stranded contract costs. The third is that we will avoid events of default that will trigger cross defaults for NG financial obligations. Uh, as you well know, uh, the uh, debts or uh, 
loan agreements of PISANG as well as the IPP lease obligations are all fully uh, guaranteed by the national gov government. One default on uh, one loan, one debt or IPP lease will trigger events of default for the uh, debts or financial obligations of the national government. Hence, um, we've cited uh, uh, an amount of 15 trillion public sector debt that will not, that will be safe and um, will not be affected if uh, the Malampaya Fund will be uh, utilized. Fourth is that we will avoid any market exposure risk related to foreign currency fluctuations and interest rates. As uh, previously mentioned, for every one peso to U.S. dollar devaluation, uh, that's equivalent to 8.4 billion peso expense to PISAM. And for every 1% per increase in interest rate, uh, that is equivalent to 8.1 billion peso uh, expense to PISAM. And lastly, uh, we need to maintain our good credit standing, not only for uh, PISAM as a corporation, but also for the Republic of the Philippines. So we're proposing that um, the Malampaya Fund um, to, um, should be utilized or if uh, allowed or approved, it will be utilized by PISAM, uh, not on a one-time uh, utilization or release, but annually uh, that will match the annual shortfalls of PISAM. And uh, hopefully it will be released at the beginning of the year so that we will no longer incur any additional borrowing costs. So that's the disbursement in installment at the beginning of each, each year based on PISAM's annual cash shortfall for the effective programming by the national government. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Ms. Blanco. Um, itong ano, no, uh, in number four, actually this is also quite a um, uh, discouraging uh, statement. But uh, since right now we're experiencing um, currency depreciation, I think for the last eight months already, uh, lumalabas dito for every peso devaluation, tumataas yung utang nyo by 8.4 billion. Correct? No. Um, right now, we are, I think the start of the year yata, nasa magkano tayo? 52? 53? No? 52? End of 2017 is 49. Ngayon is magkano na? 53? It's 53.5. 53.5. So, tumaas siya ng magkano? 3 pesos. No? So, ngayon, by purely currency depreciation, uh, you incurred an additional of 25 billion pesos. In six months. In six months. Grabe, ah. Correct? Is that, ano ba? Anything else? Uh, anything else from PISAM? Any questions po from the body? Uh, kung wala naman po, I think the Senator Binay has a... Then, Mr. Chair, pwede naman the other side, yeah, yeah. the other side naman of the yeah. equation because if we use yung malampaya fund for PISAM, meron naman ma mawawala ng pondo. So maybe it's good to hear that other side. Yeah, I, kanina ako nag-uusap kami sa Center Binay that uh, we want to listen to the opinion of DBM uh, because um, um, this funds was set aside uh, for a specific use no? in which over the many years hindi po siya nagagamit. No? Kaya kung meron pang natite abuse, well, it was also partly abused and partly misused. And now we still have about approximately 240, 204 
uh, billion uh, per books. No? So, um, we want to hear the opinion of DBM. Unang-una, uh, ano po yung opinion nyo dito sa konseptong to? Then, pangalawa, paano po uh, ang proseso, ano po yung proseso para ma-access po yung Malampaya Fund for this purpose? Sir, ano, uh, Your Honor, while we recognize the good intention of napababain yung, yung cost ng kuryente, yet, uh, while we are evaluating the Senate bill nga po, we take notice na meron tayong PD-910, yung existing sa Malampaya Fund, as well as yung pong Epiralo. Yung sa Epiralo po kasi meron para tayong yung limitation. Yung section 32 po kasi ni ni Epira Law, it provides for the limited liability na, na pwede i-assume ni government, which is 200 billion. So, uh, taking a look of the numbers, we have the 204 billion. So, medyo nag-usap kami dito na hindi po siya pwede. Kung ititik, so, kung, kung meron tayong Senate bill, siguro mas maganda po na may explicit na i-provide dun sa bill na we are limit, ah, parang tinatanggal natin tong uh, doing away with this limited liability na i-assume ni government po. Up to the mm. Any reaction to that uh, comment? Um, Mr. Chair, um, the 200 billion pesos assumed by government uh, was is provided in the EPIRA Section 32. And this has been um, implemented already uh, in 2004-2005. Uh, the balance uh, then of PISAM, uh, uh, NPC at that time, NPC's outstanding debts uh, in 2000, 2004 was one, 1 trillion. And uh, this already considered the 200, the, or this already uh, included the 200 billion assumed by the national government. Uh, for the part of PISAM, uh, maybe the DBM, uh, ma'am, from the DBM uh, is right that uh, this, this may be a limitation. Uh, for the NG, NG's assumption of the uh, up to 200 billion. But then again, come uh, 2026, it will all be assumed by the national government. So, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, yeah, Mr. Chair, for the information of uh, the committee and the body, let me just apprise you of some developments. As I've mentioned to the uh, chairman before, uh, this proposal was brought by the secretary as early as 2016. And in the meantime, there had been other proposals uh, that were made. And among those, if I remember it right, DBM has a proposal. In fact, uh, we were asked to comment if that fund will be uh, incorporated to the general fund. I think uh, DBM has plans to use the fans also, so they're getting our comment. Siguro, Mr. Chair, ano yung plan ninyo dun sa fund? Uh, uh, good morning, Your Honor. Actually, there's a proposed uh, bill that uh, DBM commented regarding the um, proposition that the whole Malampaya fund would be transferred to the general fund to fund priority national government projects and programs. Like what? Um, Ma'am, it's not specified in that uh, proposed bill, but the, in as much as the fund has not been used for quite a while, uh, it's due to Supreme Court decision, no releases has been made chargeable against the fund. Uh, it was proposed to be transferred to the general fund. So, uh, whatever naman the limitation set forth by uh, IPIRA can be amended here in the bill. The basic concept really is to use the fund to pay off the debts. Uh, but in this case, I think si Senator Bina made a very good point. Uh, 
to clarify in the wordings of the law that it will be used to pay off the shortfall. No? Uh, we have to just be very clear that uh, the proceeds will be used for a specific uh, account or a specific purpose. No? Kasi iba yung debts, iba yung, iba yung shortfall. Eh. These are two different uh, uh, accounts. No? Um, assuming that uh, Congress and the Senate will pursue this proposal, ano ba yung magiging process ng DBM uh, regarding uh, the use of malampaya? No? Sir, um, <laughs> actually, uh, under, the, under the existing procedure, it is a special account, so it, it, it passed through the uh, programming under the during the preparation of national expenditure program. Uh, however, since it's a, it is a special account and a, an automatic appropriation, actually it forms part of the program but not of the General uh, Appropriations Act because uh, it is uh, uh, supported by a separate law, the PD-910 and the amending law on RA 7638 of the DOE. Uh, with this uh, new, new proposition about the use of the Malampaya Fund, um, actually, sir, I'm not quite sure how we are going to per record there is an amount that is collected and de by the DOE and deposited to the BTR under the special account of the DOE. So if we are going to... Uh, if the proposal is to have it used by the uh, PISAM for payment of the, I'm not quite sure, sir, how it will go with the records of the BTR and how are we going to release it. Actually, if the fund is under the BTR, all releases for government corporations pass through the BTR. So if there would be a law that would, would transfer the maybe the fund, the Malampaya fund, direct to the BTR and the BTR to release, the release would be under the BTR, going to the PISAM as a GOCC. Hindi ko lang po alam, sir, sa BTR kung paano yung process. Mr. Mariano of the BTR. Your Honor, good morning. So, sir, as mentioned by our colleagues from the DPM, the Malampaya Fund accrues to a special account in the general fund. So as such, it is commingled with the other accounts in the general fund. And hence, if there are any other, if there are any uh, appropriations coming from the Malampaya Fund, it will have to be raised uh, or it will have to be programmed as well as part of the financing of the national government. Um, sources, of course, uh, coming from the standby from the uh, current cash holdings of the national government, but in case uh, there is an assessment that the, assess, uh, the cash holdings will dip or will be below prudent levels, then we will, that will be also the funding will be sourced through our borrowings as well. Siguro, Mr. Chair, before, ano, um, magka, as of today, magkano na ba talaga yung nandun sa account ng Malampaya Fund? Uh, Your Honor, uh, Based on our preliminary data, as of end June 2030, total uh, remittances uh, to the Malampaya Fund uh, amounts to around 259.3 billion pesos. 259.3. As of ano yun? As of end June 2018. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, uh, Mr. Mariano, what I understand, no? Uh, pag rinirimit yung malampaya, no, there is uh, a book recording kung magkano, and then the cash gets commingled. Correct? So ngayon, for example, we enact this law. No? The DBM will now have to submit appropriations. Correct? To fund this law. No? Um, so, and those appropriations will now reflect in the General Appropriations Act. Ganyan ba ang proseso? We'll have to verify whether it will be part of the de program deficit since it is part of the... But 
it will make its way definitely, Your uh, Your Honor, back to our programming of the deficit because if there is insufficient balances relative to the disbursement, then we will have to finance it through borrowings. So, kung hindi po naman siya... The concept, we're not... The concept nga here is to use the cash to pay off the borrowings, not borrow to pay off the borrow. Diba? So, I think the, the concept here is to use the cash to pay off the borrowings, not borrow more to pay off the the outstanding uh, the outstanding debts no um, uh, I, I your honor that's why I guess that that will also be part of the uh, what was mentioned before on the cost benefit analysis because on the programming of what needs to be financed or what has to be disbursed out of the Malampaya fund uh, of course yung predicament po na you mentioned the borrowing in uh, to cover additional borrowings stems from yung uh, naging treatment ng fund coming from PD910, PD1234, I guess, specifying yung special accounts as a, uh, specifying yung mga special funds before as a special account. So yung very new nature po ng uh, Malampaya fund yung nagiging uh, factor dun sa predicament. Question dito, hahanapan ng cash eh. Correct? Um, based dun sa assessment po natin ng uh, cash flow, how much of yung cash yung available, and then is it enough to cover yung borrowings? Or, sorry, is it enough to cover yung magiging disbursement out of the Malampaya Fund? Mr. Chair, um, kasi di ba may mga na-disburse na dun sa Malampaya Fund? Can you just ano, say, refresh our memory kung ano yung na-disburse, tsaka ano yung programa na yun? Uh, Your Honor, um, the Treasury is mainly uh, responsible for accounting for the remittances. As I mentioned, it's around 259. Uh, the disbursements, we verify this, of course, uh, with inputs from DOE and DBM, uh, and is mainly covered by uh, by SARO. So, pag napoprovide lang po kami ng copy, that's the time that we have yung uh, disbursements for the Malampaya Fund. So currently, and yung uh, verification naman po namin is uh, active and ongoing with DOE to uh, verify the balances. So currently, total disbursements is around 43.7 as of end June billion. So leaving a net balance of 250, around 215.6. Uh, again, preliminary, we're still uh, working out because yung sa breakdown din po nito, meron din po tayo yung tinitingnan na uh, just uh, which may factor into sa consideration earlier. Uh, note that we have 215 net uh, of releases, but there is a local government and a national government share. So net of the net of the local government share. brings the national government share of Malampaya to around 185.3. So this may not be enough to cover the proposed 200 billion in one of the scenarios. And um, unless I am mistaken, or I, I, we're still looking for something, but uh, I think there's an IRR, Your Honor, for the Malampaya, which limits how much uh, can be disbursed annually. Maybe we if there's any information CBM yes your honor actually before we release malampaya the first time we release malamp malampaya is based on interim agreement and or preliminary mm. or uh, the agreement before on the release of LGU share but now uh, after the uh, Supreme Court decision we are no longer releasing uh, funds charge, uh, releasing allotment chargeable against the Malampaya Fund, uh, regardless if it's uh, um, NG or LGU share. I think the LGU share can be uh, 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 confirmed by the DOE, but that is as far as uh, the DOE informed us during the preparation of our BESF. Na, no, uh, they are still not releasing any funds chargeable against Malampaya. As for the previous releases, sir, uh, 
we we program it uh, we uh, the releases were based on the executive orders issued at that time um uh the dbm would, would issue the siro based on executive order and we inform the doe on the release uh, to update the record so at this point the total amount of the total balance of 204 billion as of december uh, is the balance of the malampaya fund and there are no charges made on that fund per record um, and maybe the the disbursement that the btr is stating is on the disbursement on fund one pipe one which are one 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 by one pro, uh, projects of BOE charge under fund one five fund coming from other sources, not the Malampaya fund, other service contracts on petroleum and government share from other uh, con service contracts that entered into by the DOE. Na, Mr. Chair, siguro para mas malinaw. Meron na hubang mga projects na napondohan through Malampaya Fund. And yung, yung as of 2013, marami po. Can you just name a few? Uh, ito po yung, based dun sa EO254, yung mga priority development projects ng Palawan. Ito po yung based sa agreement with the President, then President Arroyo. Then, How uh, much was that? 300 million. Okay. Sir, uh, ma'am, actually, it's too many to mention. There are also various projects for DPWH and electrification projects for DOE. May, there are also the OTC projects. Siga, can you just submit to the committee? Yes. Oh, kasi parang, Mr. Chair, um, ang hirap mag-decide kung ibibigay sa PISALM kung hindi natin alam kung ano bang balak niya dun sa pera. Diba? I mean, how would we do a cost-benefit analysis when there's no other proposal coming from DBM kung ano pa talagang balak niyo dun sa 204 billion. Or DOE, alas meron na kayo nakaprogram na potential projects for this fund. May I, Mr. Chair? Yeah, let's, let me just uh, go back. Uh, in uh, 1976, because of the oil embargo and the crisis at that time, PD-910 was uh, issued by then President Marcos primarily to address a situation where we should have to uh, have source out indigenous sources of energy. So in that law, uh, uh, there, will be fees, there will be fees that will be collected in service contracts. And among others, we have the Malampaya Fund. Uh, this is one of the successful projects. So what I'm trying to say is basically, the purpose of this amount or fund that's going to be collected then was to, of course, be able to uh, do explorations, uh, studies on uh, development and utilization of indigenous sources of energy. So, nagkaroon tayo ng pondo na yan. So, in that law, however, nakalagay doon how to use that fund. Uh, for energy uh, development resource projects, that's number one. And number two, it will be used as may be directed by the President. So in the meantime, uh, ginagamit itong pondo nato for other activities, not for energy resource projects. Then came the Belica case uh, that was uh, uh, decided upon by the Supreme Court in 2013, where it declared unconstitutional this second provision, saying that it's going to be, uh, if it's going to be directed by the President, can do So wala na yun. So in the meantime, until now, ang nangyayari ngayon, pwede lang gamitin yun sa energy resource projects. But because of previous controversies in the use of the Malampaya Fund, medyo bumagal yan since 2013. So from 2013 to 2016, hindi yan nagamit. And from, since the uh, assumption ni President Duterte, hindi pa yan ginagamit. At the start of the hearing then, ng, uh, at the start of the term of President Duterte, this idea of using this for the UC was brought by the Secretary. But in the meantime, there has been so many other ideas like uh, 
itong uh, uh, using it sa transmission lines, interconnection, pupunta sa DBM, uh, coming out with the seismic vessel, gagamitin sa exploration, so that we could continue pushing through with our exploration projects. But previously, as your question, ma'am, in 2013, uh, may listahan niya ng DBM, but ang mga maalala ko niya, for example, uh, meron yung uh, bumi sa Palawan, there have been two, uh, in, uh, there have been at an interim agreement where disbursements were made 300M and another, thing, another 300M for around the total of 600M. Itong binigay ito sa Palawan, yung agreement, pag natalo sila sa kaso, based on the PD-910 na sinasabi, okay, sa inyo na yan, gamitin nyo. But if nanalo sila sa kaso, uh, credited ito doon sa amount na pupunta sa kanila. Kasi there's a pending case. But in the meantime, this case is still pending. So, kaya yung nagkaroon ngayon ng ramification doon sa, sa presentation, if it's going to be used, the total 204 or only a certain amount. Kasi ang ano doon, binawas doon yung kaso sa Palawan just in case nanalo yung Palawan. The previous na maalala ko po noon na uh, medyo yung from 2013 yung binili ng barko, ginamit sa mga gensets, uh, then yung sa Palawan, then uh, may mga programs, social benefits, uh, uh, victims sa uh, flood in, in previously. You know? So, ito yung umaabot ng, may listahan mo kayo, no? uh, umaabot ng around yung sinasabi yung mga 49B lahat ng disbursements. But let me make it, make it very clear no? na yung sinabi ni na ma'am na uh, Anyway, and yung, yung DOE law, merong 20% of the current year ng Malampaya Fund, pwedeng gamitin ng DOE. Okay. Uh, ang DOE, actually, yun ang pinakamalit ng budget yata sa government. Eh, with only 2.5 billion, and half of that comes from the special fund. Yung special fund na yan, by the way, is not only Malampaya. It is generated from other sources, uh, fees coming from all projects. But uh, Malampaya is the known, uh, the, the big one kasi about 97% of all uh, fees na nakukulekta uh, pursuant to PD-1910 comes from Malampaya. Sa oil, in, sa naman, sa, sa coal naman, and around 97% also sa uh, Semerara. So that, that's the entire situation. That's why now, again, we are again confronted by this problem in oil. So immediately, one of the proposals uh, that was made uh, by the uh, Department of Energy is, why don't we have our own uh, seismic vessel? So, kasi malawak yung ano natin eh, seas natin, we could uh, really make a study kung ano yung mga possible sources of, uh, of gas and oil. So that's the historical, uh, on the pers historical perspective, ganun na nangyari dyan. Thank you, sir. Tony Jerpy, uh, the way I understand it, no? Uh, after the Supreme Court ruling, it's very clear that the fund is only for energy development purposes, correct? Yeah, yes, Mr. Chair. And DOE being the lead agency for energy, uh, DOE is now the entity that will dictate where to use Malampaya, correct? At least we're the lead agency that we will uh, recommend. Mr. Recommend, Chair. yes. Uh, and then the president will now approve, no, through, yes, and through an executive order. So yes, very clear, Mr. Jan. Opo. It's not DBM who will dictate where to use it, but it's DOE who will dictate where to use it. Correct. That's why we need to comment, uh, Mr. Chair, about uh, the proposal. And then I remember that one of the strategies of the good secretary to lower down electricity rates is to wipe out the stranded debt and the stranded cost yes. uh, being incurred by the Filipino people. Yes, Mr. it was made before you uh, early on this uh, ter term as secretary. Correct. So we, we'll, we'll assume that still stays, no? subject to your uh, final uh, written uh, position. Paper. Yes, Mr. Chair, it's still one of those. Uh, as I've said, it, he made a proposal and in the meantime others came in. So uh -huh. it still stays. So sub sub subject to your position paper. Yes, Mr. Okay. So very clear yan. Only DOE can dictate where to use Malampaya. No? Subject to the President's approval. No? Yes, Mr. The second question is, saan kukunin yung pera? Correct? Because per box, nandyan. Per cash, wala. So saan kukunin ng B BTR yung pera? 
kasi nakumingle siya eh. No? So, uh, nung rinimit ng Shell yung pera, hinalo sa, sa general fund, but it's being accounted for by DU, actually DOE is also accounting that, eh. DOE, DTR, and DBM. No? But the actual cash itself is put in a common fund where doon na kinukuha for other purposes. Now, now the question is, assuming we approve this bill, no? what is the process of uh, allocating cash to fund this bill? Uh, Mr. Mariano? Your Honor, uh, I'll, we'll, I'll just have to check, but um, in the, at the very least, sir, it will make its way to the financing program, meaning yung total amount that we raise for the year, meaning yung compost of revenues um, and adding yung mga borrowings natin. Uh, whether it's added to the budget as part of the deficit or it's part of yung sa amount na i-raise natin through uh, pandagdag do sa ating cash buffer, then it will definitely make its way to our financing program. Question, you mean to say there's a possibility, assuming that we approve this program, pwede umutang kayo para lang mag-produce kayo ng cash for this program? Yes, Your Honor. So, nadadagdagan lang ang utang natin? Um, yes, Your Honor. Um, well, if I may just add uh, to the presentation of uh, Pisam earlier. So, they did mention that Prior to, I think that's back in 2012, the national government had a relending program with PISAM. So there's also uh, efforts to uh, help PISAM with its borrowing cost. Like in, uh, that's why we had a relending in 2012. Instead of PISAM having to borrow for its requirements, it was the national government which borrowed. Uh, since we borrow at a lower rate compared to uh, a corporation, so we relent the funds, and then PISAM is now. Uh, repaying yung mga ganito pong borrowings nila. Parang may mali lang, Mr. Chair, kasi, kunwari, it's, siguro, isimplify natin, or just a household na nagbabudget ka, technically, dapat ang alam ko, meron pa akong 204 billion doon na I can always use, na hindi ko kailangan umutang. But apparently, kung magbabayad tayo ng utang, uutang din naman pala kayo ulit. Uh, Your Honor, um, I again, that's the effect of the treatment of the Malampaya as a special account in the general fund. So in the previous years na pumasok nga po siya, it has been utilized with the uh, notion, of course, that should it be needed in the future, then it will make its way into our financing program. So in the previous years, uh, it might have contributed already to uh, savings in terms of uh, because we didn't have to borrow already since the cash is already there as part of our uh, national uh, cash budget. And, uh, of course, if I may add as well, uh, any foregone borrowings redounds to savings then on the national government. Because, for example, uh, le let's say in the capital markets, you, you borrow at 3% 3, 3 or 4%, then let's say our, our accounts in the central bank only earns 2.5%. So if we did not borrow then and just let the cash stand idly, then uh, we had a negative carry. We borrowed more and earned less from idle cash balances. So part lang po dun, um, Your Honor, no ating cash management at saka nung, again, the nature of the, uh, the fund as a special account. Uh, Mr. Mariano, I, I think... Um, um, through your position paper, itemize properly yeah. no, the procedure on how to allocate cash to finance uh, this proposal. My understanding is when the Senate approves this proposal, it becomes a sort of a priority project or priority program of the government. So it takes precedence in terms of financing this program. And when I say financing, it can be through debt or it can be through uh, the revenues of the government para hindi na tayo uutang. No? So, but that is now the call of the Department of Finance. No? Because ang bottom line dito, since batas na siya, dapat mapondohan na siya. No? Kayo na bahala kung saan nyo kukunin yung pondo, through general fund 
or through other cheaper sources. No? But uh, the concept here really is not to borrow in order to pay another, another borrowing. The concept here is to use the cash to pay off uh, the past borrowings. No? Yung po yung concept po dito. No? So I think you need to go back to your management and discuss this. No? And, uh, but the concept really here is to pare down or even eliminate the debt of uh, PISAM. Now my next question is, kay Mrs. Belinda, ay kay, is gano'n katagal pa ho ang malampaya? The contract, I'm sorry, the contract is until February 2024, but as we said, depending on how you extract, there will be about three to five years uh, after 2024. Ma'am Belinda, can we project the income stream f until next, until 2024? We will have to ask uh, Shell to make that, uh, as the operator, to, to make that projection. Because um, what is not included here in the bill is the future income streams. Mm -hmm. So we still have 2018 to 2024, uh, a good six years to receive uh, revenues from Malampaya. Yes, but uh, yung, as to the amount of uh, revenues coming from Malampaya, we need some form of projection no? Correct. or forecast from uh, the Malampaya Consortium as to how much still uh, is due to the government. Yes. No? Um, of course, that's, uh, um, that's also aligned to the quantities being uh, uh, being uh, harnessed from the Malampaya gas field. Mm -hmm. no? And that's a technical question. Mm -hmm. no? um, at the same time, uh, Attorney Jerpy, um, we are thinking of including the future income stream to pay off. Because if you notice, doon po sa isang slide, even though we used 204 billion, meron pang 63 billion pesos na may iwan. Um, subject to the computation of, of uh, Shell and the consortium, baka kung sinama natin yung remaining six years, we might pay off completely the entire uh, stranded cost of stranded debt by uh, by PSAM, no? Para po wala nang matitira doon po sa isa, doon sa 204. Next slide. Ayan, yan, yan. May matitira pang uh, 63 billion. Eh. Is, is DOE amenable to that proposal? Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, what is important to us is what is best for the nation. Anyway, this, this will be fully discussed by Congress. So I, I suppose everything will be ventilated, Mr. Chair. Uh, can you also put that in your position paper, that uh, future earnings will be applied to, uh, to the payment of stranded debt and stranded costs? Yes, Mr. Chair. So that talagang yung, if you notice yung additional UC impact, baka if we add on the future earnings, mazizero na yan. No, therefore, we don't have to pass on anything to the consumers. So happy si Attorney Dimagi ba? No? Diba, Attorney? So uh, we're just uh, looking at some concepts. Uh, and that's why we need the future projections from, at least conservative projections from the Malampaya Consortium, no? uh, so that we can include that in, in the bill. No? All right. Um, any, any questions or um, statements from the other stakeholders? Uh, sa NPC, meron kayong any, any comments? ERC, any additional comments? No? Wala man. Uh, how about to uh, NEDA? Nandiyan ba NEDA? Ah, Nea pala, sorry, ah. malabo na yung mata ko. Nea, uh, PNOC, any, ano? Tony Dimagi ba, any last words? Sa DOE po, any last words? No, no other words. words. Uh, uh, with that, um, Senator Binay, with that, I think we have uh, covered um, almost, uh, almost all of the issues, uh, subject to the submission na lang po ng mga stakeholders but um, 
uh, just to remind everyone, please submit to us uh, before August 6, no, which is Monday of next week. Tama ba? Mr. Chair, Tama. siguro yes. baka pwede pa dagdag lang din sa submission because um, na-mention ni DOE that DBM parang already asked their opinion for certain projects for the Malampaya Fund. Mm -hmm. Can they also provide the committee that list? Okay, yes. Please provide us with the most current list of the projects uh, implemented in the past, no? Tama ba, Senator? Yeah, yeah. Kasi di, di ba parang you're thinking of uh, putting the funds sa GAA? Tapos you ask the opinion of DOE actually, for ma those projects. Uh, actually, ma'am, we have the list of the previously released uh, SAROF charge against Malampaya, but this uh, proposal is uh, generic. There's no list attached to the proposed uh, um, EO, I think. I'm not sure, ma'am. I will just provide you a copy, but definitely there would be no list of projects. Just a statement that it would be used for national government projects. Na yun yung binigay nyo sa DOE for comment? Opo, ganun lang po yan, ma'am. Ganun ka generic? Yes po. Ang ano lang po na, na meron lang po kami list yung na-release na, na po natin. Opo. Okay na po. So ganun lang yung hinihinging opinion sa inyo. If you're okay for DBM to utilize the fund, saga, ah, with no specific projects. Uh, among others, uh, Mr. Chair, ma'am, uh, I think uh, it's more on the concept that DBM will use the, the funding, but for that specific, I, I'm not sure with that specific statement, Mr. Pero ang, D, ang DOE, ho, wala ba kayong submission sa DBM na parang uh, ito yung nakikita namin project for the Malampaya Fund? Wala pa kaming binibigay sa official comment, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have one last question. No? How do you, what is your interpretation of net national government share? Ano bang interpretation nyo dito? Uh, Mr. Chair, sa una, let's go back to the, to the income. No? 60-40 coming from the consortium. So that 60% goes to the national share then that national share uh, will be divided again 60 40 40 goes to the lgu so the so the 40 percent of the 60 percent that is 24 2 point, uh, 24 percent goes to the lgu yeah. so on definition of net national government share is that 60 percent of the proceeds coming from the consortium, correct? 60 from 60 the consortium. Yes. From yes. the consortium, yes. yun ang definition. Yes, in, in which that 60 is broken up to another 60-40. 60-40. But that's still debatable. Uh, th that is what is the already provided for by the local government code. But what happened is, in 40, ang naging debate lang doon, yung 40% napupunta sa LGU, yung interim agreement ginawa, ginawang 2020 binigay kinukuha mo na yung 20% yung computation na binigay ko namin sa inyo that, that 50% pero hindi binibigay yung total 40% nung nagbibigay pa yung covered ng interim agreement so dito po sa batas na kasulat all proceeds of the net national government shares from the collection of the Malampaya National Gas Project. So, ibig sabihin, yung buong 60% ito? Yan ang ganun pagkain din yun. And we'll double check it, Mr. Chair. So, kasi dalawa yan eh. 60-40 hmm. uh, ng total goes to the national, then another 60-40 national and LGU. There are two terminologies, uh, Mr. Chair. Isa sa local governing code, tapos isa dito sa agreement. But let me check that. Uh, kasi we have to be very clear magkano yung, yung fund at yung terminology ng fund. No? Dahil um, you have to be very clear which uh, account will be used 
for the uh, stranded cost and the stranded debt. Basically, magiging 24% to ang pupunta sa LGU. So, ganyan lang. Para hindi na malito. 60, 40, then 40% of the 60. Siguro, Mr. Chair, baka maganda malaman what is that 24% equivalent to? Is it ilang billion yung 24% na yun? Na supposed to be mapupunta dun sa LGU. 24, 60, 40, then 40 of 60, 24. 36 goes to the national. Ayun yung... That's 40 equal to consortium. So 36 goes to the control and computation. Okay. Then the computation, magiging 24, 36, 40. Only one sa national is 36. Apo, of the, pag ganun yung simplified ano, computation. Okay. Kasi di ba, at the moment, may 259 billion. That's the whole fund. So is yung 40% ba ng 259 billion supposed to be for the LGU? Ah, uh, yung 40% uh, of the total nun, no? no? LGU na, no? Okay. Pero yung 259 na sabi ko, 151 yan, di ba? So 151, hindi iba pa yung... Yung 151 covers all fees, not only malampaya. So, as of December 204. So, siguro maganda malaman, mag magkano ba talaga yung malampaya lang? You remove the other... Yung mga minus, yung minus dyan na. <laughs> yeah, what is the base amount for malampaya? Yeah, pero kasi, para lumalabas mo yung 259, may kasama pang collection for other from other funds eh. So, ano lang yung talagang malampaya lang talaga? Attorney Jerpy, I think uh, just to be very precise on which accounts will be used for the payoff of stranded costs, stranded debts, please uh, define to us no, uh, clearly which are the, which are the uh, accounts that we can use no, pertaining yes, to the malampaya fund. Kasi dito sa bill, it's a generic uh, term, no? net national government share. No? My understanding there is the entire 60% na nakukuha ng government. Apo, that's how I understand it. But what you are saying, that 60%, a portion of that goes to the LGU. Uh, that 60%, it's the national the government share. Uh -oh. The 60% of the total income. Uh, will be divided again to 60-40. The 40 goes to the LGU. Correct nga. Yung 60% na natin, hindi nakukuha natin 60%, that will be further divided into 60-40. Yes, right? yes, Mr. But the bill says, hindi na, the bill says the entire 60%. So, wala na kung, in other words, walang mention ng LGU who dito. Hindi, unless you, you unless our assumption is yung net national Minus na yung local share. Uh, Kung baga yung 60% na lang yon less of the 40 already. Actually, okay. fra from the submission ng DOE, hindi ganun yung definition eh. Ang definition ng net national government share is that entire 60% from the remittance of the consortium. Baka ano ba definition ng DBM pag net, net national? Less LGU share na yon Ma'am, dun po sa computation po na nandun sa naka-attach sa ano ng DOE, net national government share, yun lang po yung napupunta sa sa 151 na na ano nila account. Yun, bali po, yung pag nakwenta na po yung net, net, total government share nila coming from the overall income, Ine-net po nila yung 40%, tapos yun po yung nag-represent nag ng net national government share. You mean to say there's a fund, there's another account, na dun dinadala yung 40% ng LG? Yun lang po yung hindi ko sure sa DOE, kasi ganun po yung explanation, yung nag-comprise lang po ng, ng, ng papasok sa special account supposed to be nila for national programs and projects, eh yun lang po yung ano, uh, 60% nung 60% government share. So, siguro maganda malaman sa BTR kung 
how do you define that yung, account? Yung, is, pag, yung, yung record. Pumasok ba sa inyo is the 60, per, the 60 of the 60? Yes, ma'am. Kasi kung 60 of the 60 yung nasa record na, nasan si 40? Yung 40 kasi LGU share. Hindi, automatic din na-download sa LGU. Hindi nga eh. Meron din pong proseso, ma'am. Meron din pinoprogram sa ALGO para dun sa LGU share. Hindi lang po ako sure sa DOE kung how they record it and also sa BTR kung paano po na-account yun. So what you're saying is it's not part of the I mean, 151. Hindi the local po, share is po, not ha? part of the 151. Oh, 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 oh. Mr. Chair, we recognize the presence of uh, Center uh, JVR Sito. Mr. Chair, that's why if you could uh, remember Mr. Chair in the initial hearings, I, I cautioned uh, the committee uh, because at that time we were not still discussing about this LGU share. Uh, I cautioned that there's a pending case and discuss this LGU share. And as, as originally defined, uh, Mr. Chair, that, that national government share is the 60-40 from the profit. But it will be very important to have this defined, I think, in the, in the law when it is being. Mr. Chair, sir, question lang. Doon ba sa pending case, mawawala yung 40% share ng LGU? Pag nanalo ang Palawan, kukunin nila yung 40%. Pag natalo sila, wala na silang 40%? Wala na, wala na po. Yes, Mr. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, yun po palang dun sa sinasabi natin kanina sa DBM, ano po siya, comment po namin sa House Bill 7579, Ang statement po kasi, all fees and receipts nung coming from PD910 um, shall, sh uh, shall be used for, shall form part of the General Fund of the Philippines to be used to, to, be used to finance energy resource development and exploitation programs and projects of the government as appropriated by Congress in the Annual General Appropriations Act. Ma'am, parang nililipat lang po natin siya from, um, uh, from automatic APRO na special fund na magiging part na po siya ng General Fund of the Government. Pero nandun pa rin naman po yung uh, yung purpose is the same pa rin. Dito po to sa House Bill set. 7579. Yung ililipat lang, parang papalitan lang po yung kanyang uh, nature from automatic, magiging annually appropriated. Kaya dadaan na po siya sa Congress. Thank you. Senator Sito. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Sa etya na pahabo lang. I'd just like to ask, um, DBM ba, ano, Yung mula yung, uh, ano, yung, sorry, yung malang payo funds goes to the tre National Treasury. Sino ang dito bang Treasury? Could we have a, a detailed ano, on how it was spent, uh, actually, yung actual disbursements? Can you submit it? Para lang we have a, we would know how, um, how the fund was used, to? kasi dapat yan for exploration, energy exploration eh. But it was used for other purposes before. So just, we just like to have an idea. Uh, siguro sa Bureau of Treasury, if you can request, Mr. Chair, a complete history of the actual disbursements of um, of the uh, Malabaya funds. Pwede ba sa ano? Bureau of Treasury? Uh, Your, Your Honor, good morning. Uh, Your Honor, uh, as uh, the, the Bureau of the Treasury mainly accounts sir, for the uh, receipts and the disbursements uh, for from the Malabaya fund, um, we are only able to monitor the releases based on copies of the SARO, which was provided to the Treasury. Uh, perhaps uh, the, the agency is better able to provide the details on the expenditure uh, will be D DBM or DOE. Expenditures, sir. Yung expenditure details ng Malampaya. D DBM. DBM ba? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, actually, sir, yung amin pong information, on SARO issued lang din po, sir, regarding, kasi, yun pong disbursement, actually, is uh, under the, ano na po, the implementing agency, kung kanino man po na-release yung pondo. 
sila po yung meron po siguro yung record ng disbursement, yun pong control na hawak po ng DBM, yung ano lang po yung allotment issued. The, the, the projects, the, the agency, and the allotment issued. Yun lang po. So, hindi natin ba, ano, hindi natin ba ako yung history kung how it was uh, utilized? I, yun po kasi yung disbursement. Yes, depende sa agency. Hindi yung implementing agency po po kasi yung nakakaalam nun. Maybe, Bureau of Treasury na lang. Kung sabi na lang, ano, so that we'll just have an idea sa committee. At least we can determine yung ano, di ba, yung, uh, net nas yung government share. Malaman nun natin. Uh, Mr. Chair, I think, uh, so walang finger point in dito. Anyway, we went through a process of reconciling everything. Kasi iba-iba pa yung figures namin for a while eh. So we reconciled. I suppose they have an idea. We have time lap. We will submit the three of us that reconciled uh, list. Um, I think the point of center, Ercito, is uh, mga past projects na ginamitan. Uh, please to, submit to us yung pinaka-updated uh, na listahan. Although, it was disclosed earlier that the funds uh, were never touched since 2013, correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. So, all the projects uh, uh, that were uh, implemented through the Malampaya uh, prior to 2013, pakisubmit na lang po sa amin. Yes, Mr. Chair. All right. Thank you po. Do you want to raise that? Yeah. just to really have the committee, can you request a uh, BTR? Na kung pwede yung submission nyo, um, paano ba yan? May competition kasi di ba, we plan to use this fund to pay off yung, to help Pisan. But at the same time, may possibility na uutang kayo to raise that amount. Can we just get, um, Paano ba yun? Yung computation na yun, yung magkano naman yung magiging pass on sa atin nung pag-utang nyo na yun para din sa pambayad ng utang nila. Because you know, at the end of the day, kung mas pabigat pala sa amin, sa atin, na utang kayo ulit, eh di baka mas maigi, eh, status ko na lang tayo. So, kaya yung ganang BTR to provide the committee with that type of computation. Okay, uh, yes, Your Honor. We will uh, add it in our position paper. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Oh, Mr. Chair, probably, you know, no? I, uh, I would, uh, I would, I would uh, support. No, I think this this measure uh, should be treated with urgency, considering that um, the high interest costs of pam pam pisan. Ay, kung mabayaran na natin, no, may, if you can um, uh, focus on this and then also if this, will, if this will bring down the cost of um, electricity, it will be very ano, beneficial for everybody, no? especially the, for the economy. One of the major factors probably why foreign investors are not um, coming to the Philippines in kahit ang investment grade tayo. One is you invest me, ano natin, yung infrastructure weakness natin. And the second is the high cost of energy. So, Mr. Chair, I would say, I would, ano, I uh, would, um, indoor, I would uh, support the, this, uh, the urgency, and uh, I hope that this, this measure will be passed uh, as soon as possible. Thank you, Mr. Chair. One last na lang, Mr. Chair. I'm just, uh, Curious, kasi di ba, para nang bang, nabanggit niyo kanina, na kunyari, wala, wala tayong gagawin para tulungan kayo. At the end of the day, it will still be the national government would uh, absorb your loan. Napag-aralan na ho ba ng DBM yung ganitong scenario na uh, pagkatapos ng life ng pisang, ganito yung utang, at papana natin babayaran itong utang na to. May ganong projection na ba yung DBM? 
actually, ma'am, the unit handling the corporations, not with us. So, I don't think we can make a comment on that question. But we'll just inform them if there are somewhat studies they're doing about the t termination or the final life of PISAM as well as the loans or debts. Since Chair, maybe we can ask kung sino man sa DBM in charge to submit to the committee if they do, uh, to inform the committee kung meron silang ganong study at kung wala naman, kung meron, submit the study. Kung wala, can they just inform the committee na nothing? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm sure ngayon nyo lang nalaman na ganito kalaki absorb ng national government. No? Actually, ngayon ko rin lang nalaman eh. <laughs> The last, siguro, last point, uh, Mr. Chair, and we can laugh. Just to have an idea sub sound, siguro, President can answer. Yung, yung interest cost, yung gano'ng kataas talaga. Just to give us an idea. If the... Um, um, Because time will be of the essence. Kung mataas talaga yung interest ko, sana dapat may pasa talaga. So basically, po, um, our rough computation is around... 6.06 percent every annum per annum, and that translates to around eight eight billion, eight billion for every month of delay, right? One percent increase. For every one percent increase, it's eight billion. Eight eight billion for every one percent increase. So actually, you're correct, Senator JV, that um, time is really of the essence because the cost to the Filipino people of the borrowings is very substantial. So we need to address this soon. Thank you. Uh, that at least we, have, we now have an idea no, how substantial it is. Medyo mataas pala, no? Um, and then it, this will bring down, definitely, this will help bring down the cost of electricity once this is addressed. Yes. Yes. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. That's all. Um, um, I hope that we can already pass this measure as soon as possible because uh, this will greatly help um, reduce the cost and the uh, more than more, more than the yung papasali, pero siguro yung economic cost dito will be ben uh, with, with, this will uh, benefit the economy especially. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Senator Sito. Um, uh, once again, I want to remind everyone to submit to us your respective position papers on or before August 6. Um, I just want to just emphasize on uh, the following departments for DBM uh, projects, which uh, projects that uh, were funded by Malampaya uh, that is also uh, required from the BOTR. Uh, we are also requesting Shell to help us with the revenue projections. Um, Yes, in coordination with the uh, DOE, of course. And ERC, the improved process flow for the approval of um, uh, applications, specifically uh, PSAM applications. And then from DOE, I uh, would like to um, request for a definitive uh, position paper uh, on this bill and also on the use of the future income stream coming from Malampaya. Uh, we would like to also request DOE to um, assist us in the definitions of the various terms, no? uh, specifically the definition of net national government share. Um, the next uh, meeting will be a technical working group subject to the submissions of all of the different um, departments and stakeholders. Um, and also to reiterate pala yung sinabi ni Senator Binay, uh, the cost and benefit analysis from the BOTR. No? Uh, this is actually very crucial uh, in moving forward uh, regarding this measure. With that, um, once again, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Senator Binay, Senator Sito, for participating in this uh, very important proposal. Thank you very much. Meeting is adjourned.